All right, we need to make sure this is working. I'm in the right place. Yes, you are Tracy. Good. So that's so far working. All right, let's close this one down. And hopefully everybody will move to the other one. All right, guys. Now we get alerts. Now everything is moving forward. Now I got to send an invite to Krillin. Uh, invite Krillin. Oh, it's Tracy. Hold on. I have to find a way to invite here. I'm going to say hi to everybody in one second. I just need to send this to Krillin. Copy a clipboard. And Gmail. Okay. While wow, my Gmail loads, here we are. You see, I didn't even get alerts that I was actually going to end up going live, and I was worried I did something wrong. Lo and behold, I checked 20 minutes before, and I can't figure out how it works. <sighs> wow. All right, so YouTube is going, but... Gmail is having a nice song and a dance. Come on, I need to compose to Krillin. Live come now. Send. All right, Tracy, can you just let him know that I sent him the link? Or it's sending. Here, it was sent. All right, everybody, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Who's saying hi to? Brian, try flippers. Hello, Tracy. Hello, Dory. Hello, Deep Fried Deals. What's up? Karen, welcome. Dan, Susie. Oh, we're getting people. Nice. Louie, Marie, Ken. Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, I'm mainly here for a question answer session. Uh, here is the man of the hour also. Let's hey, what's up? What's going on? What's up? How are you? Good, good. How are we doing? Good. Well, right. I had a whole mix up over here, but it seems that everybody got the memo to switch over to this stream instead of the other one. Okay. So we're doing good. So how many so, people you have in the you have people in the chat already or yeah we have about twelve people and Tracy's there very good Tommy didn't show you up but Dan's there Karen's there Tri Flippers is here Susie's here I'm saying there we're talking about here right yes Louis here, here there wherever here there wherever good good into the flip all right what's doing with you Krillin how's everything over there. I just had a minor, not a minor, I, I hate to call it a catastrophe, but I just had my, one of my death piles, you know, Mount Everest. I have K2 in Mount Everest, and uh, it just collapsed. I had an avalanche. So I ha I'm like, I gotta. Good luck with that. Back. What? Good luck, with, good luck with that. Yeah, so, but it's okay. Because I was going to go through a lot of the stuff anyway, so it's like, all right, I have to just, now it's like forcing me to have to now go through my death pile you know so what's the deal are things being shut down by you guys as well or is it only by the people in brooklyn that's uh getting hit with only it? you guys you're the only one to take the uh mm. the brunt <laughs> of the of the attack that's it you know we right now in nassau county they're they're changing policies of course and some of them are mirroring policies that are happening in brooklyn uh you know because when they show the map of where they want to make changes, it's the same map that you would see in Brooklyn, just over in five towns. You know what I mean? So, like, you know, that's that. That's so. A, that's, you know. To get into the topic, if anybody knows what's going on over here, Brooklyn, New York, which I'm in Staten Island, so I'm not even in the hotbed. Uh, but Brooklyn, New York, started getting hit big time with an uptick in cases. Um, 
theory mainly is because the, it's a mainly Jewish area and um, we have the high holidays at this point. Uh, we have about four holidays. Yeah, we could split it into four. Four holidays, one that's extended and I just split it into two. And uh, that's basically why we're having an uptick. Um, they decided that they're going to close down. What they don't realize is when they close down, what's going to happen is, is that people are just going to flock to other areas. What, you don't think Deal, New Jersey is going to get the the Jewish community in Brooklyn and then the half of them are going to go upstate to upstate New York in order to avoid all the lockdowns? I don't understand yeah. it. Yeah, it's... Uh... And none of it, and, and what I, what doesn't make sense to me, I, I was just talking to somebody about this, was they talk about curfews. So they say, oh, we want to have a curfew, everybody home by a certain hour. So said, <laughs> what was that going to do for you? I said, what does a curfew, I said, does it, don't you want to encourage businesses to stay open later than curfew? I mean, because if you have a curfew, then all that means is everybody has to get to that store at the same time. True. So doesn't that defeat the purpose? You know? Yep. Yeah. All it's, right. uh, it's, yes. Anyways, that's that's the deal. Um, guys, this is all up to you to ask questions regarding Judaism. Between me and you, we could relate it to. I could relate it to flipping. I could relate it to anything. But I could tell you right now that we are in middle of a. Uh, we are in middle of a holiday, and uh, it's an interesting one. <laughs> As Krillin may tell you, what goes on in his yeah. area when he sees As the Jews walking camp around. Camping. Camping. You want to call it camping out? We could call it yeah. camping out. We build huts and live in them. No, well, not necessarily live in them, mainly eating them. Oh, so now, now let me ask you that question. Now, so how, because it's still going on today. Today's the last day, no? No, today's not the last day. Tomorrow okay. and then Friday. Okay. Oh, the next. Oh, so it's a whole period. Okay. The whole right. week. So okay. it gets very complex. It's not just simply sleeping under the stars outside. Um, basically, we build a hut, if you want to call it. I could even take you guys outside to mine. And we basically supposed to be living in it, literally. Uh, according to the biblical law, uh, it states that in the Bible that you go out of a temporary house and go into go out go out of your permanent, go into a temporary dwelling, and whatnot, and we make a temporary dwelling uh, for about ten days. Um, the ultra ultra orthodox people will basically sleep in there. They would do everything in there. Um, you want to see the hut? I'll show you the hut. Um, they do everything in there, um, but mainly most people, they would basically eat there and some people sleep and that's that. It's, 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 it's up again, when it comes to Judaism, there are people who keep more than other people. Uh, they're just more religious. It's not. We don't, we don't have tears. We don't have so on and so forth. It's not like, oh, you're ultra orthodox, you're modern orthodox, you're so on and so forth. Conservative reform, though that gets into a whole different discussion. But uh, um, we basically, yeah, I mean, basically everybody feels whatever they could do and they do whatever they can. Yeah. We don't look down on people who don't. I'll take you guys out to my hut. I just got to find you. Uh, let's get moving around here. Staten Island. Yeah, Staten Island. I'm gonna go Beautiful outward. Staten Island. Yeah. Wait, well, you would probably call it the garbage dump, right? Yeah. Well, I'm trying to get you to look. I told you, you got to come back. Well, you were you were looking around when you were out when you came out to Long Island. I'm sure you were peeking around. When I was, yeah, of course, I'm always peeking around. You know how expensive it is out there. All right, yeah, everybody. But I'm Been waiting for this all week. All right. This is my temporary hut outside. This is the out part of it. What we have on top of it basically is bamboo. Sheets of bamboo, if you could see at night. This is what covers it basically. 
we'll go inside and show you what the seal is inside. We decorate it, the kids decorate it, and everything also, so it's all decorated. Ooh, that's nice. Wow, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Yep. You have some bugs in here also, obviously. It's my little daughter who made uh see, so the kids in school also, what they do is is they make so you see we have the table basically, chairs to eat. That's the hut. I can even do it out so for here. This question. Oh, and I hear somebody's air conditioning going on. That's loud. If that bothers you people, I'll go back in. But I'm outside for now. So then, as far as school, do, do your kids go to school with other kids who would be ultra-Orthodox or Hasidic or no? So, school-wise, we call it yeshiva. Yeshiva is a, is a Yiddish term for school, basically. Um, you have, you have, let's see, you have different yeshivas do different things in stents that like, so as I said, there's modern Orthodox, which basic, we're all the same. We all hold the same, all Orthodoxy, whether they're modern Orthodox, ultra Orthodox and so on, everybody holds the same. When it gets to conservative and reform, it's a little different, not only different in the sense that. They believe the same things, but they do things a little differently. Um, the rituals. Yes, the ritual. Like um, the, yeah, the rituals. The yeah. For, for example, you could say the conservative are a little bit less stricter in the sense that they would um, they would integrate. When we have when we we're in temple, when we are in synagogue, according to the Orthodox, you have a separation between men and the men and the women. Not because of sex differences and uh, we're looking down upon the woman, but rather because the guy's mind goes all over the place. And if you're going to be looking at a woman who's sitting right next to you, you're not going to be concentrating on prayers to God, basically. So that's the whole sense of that. But according to conservatism, you should have it because of the whole situation with uh, sexism and so on and so forth. They, uh, they have the women sitting next to the men. It's just, it's just the way it's just the way that they that they look at it. Um, reform, on the other hand, totally totally different. Mm -hmm. Totally different. They have a whole different outlook. I mean, they it's more like church. I mean, they they'll they'll say it themselves, from what I understand. So, it I don't I don't get it myself. It's just, that's them. But when it comes to orthodoxy in schools. Um, you have the more stricter schools, you have the Hasidic schools, and you have the less stricter schools. So less stricter schools, you would see basically yeshiva with girls and boys together, which is co-ed, and just to have Jewish studies added to it. When it comes to um, more religious, you would have this boy separate school from the girl separate school. And again, they would have more, they would have more religious studies entered into it. When it comes to um, when it comes to uh, the Hasidic, believe it or not, their main stuff is only the Jewish studies, and they only do, and they only do, um, and they all, mostly only speak in Yiddish. Mostly, yeah. most of them only speak in Yiddish when it comes to Hasidim. When it comes to the religious people, when it comes to the regular Orthodox people, it's more, it's mainly English, English and some Hebrew here and there. Yeah, so that I mean, and that was actually a big controversy because a lot of the the children from the Hasidic community, since they didn't work as much, then they, at at school, you know, for the you know the standard studies, they couldn't pass tests. Right. I'm sure, you right. remember that. So then. right, the problem. It's a lot of politics, um, but mainly the problem is is that their main the Hasidim their main studies, uh, fall into the fact of. Uh, Jewish studies. They focus mainly on Jewish studies and only on Jewish studies. They feel that the husband is basically, and I'm talking when, when I'm talking to the Hasidim, the Hasidic schools. We're talking about, um, we're talking about the boys mainly. The girls would have normal, more of a normal education because in their society and their way of life, basically, is the husband is going to be learning Jewish studies all day. And get a stipend from from that 
but the woman is going to be the bread maker and bring in the money into the household. Um, where do I fall into the Jewish denomination? I am. I would like to say modern Orthodox. I again, I would basically say there's two, maybe two, three levels of Orthodoxy. You have modern, the more like we call it yeshivish, the more like hardcore, and then the Hasidim, basically. Uh, that's wh that's where it falls into that. I'm trying to catch up on seeing what stuff's going on here. Can Krillin sleep under the awning at Taco Bell? <laughs> I'm sure he would no, love this. So now, that, another question is too, which uh, I'm sure, obviously, you're going to have a better answer than I would naturally. Go for it. But I'm making the assumption that the pre the prime minister of Israel is not, or he does not, he does not practice the, the ritualistic Orthodox faith. He, he doesn't, I mean, as far as I would, I mean, I was, I'm assuming, you know, um, that he does. Who? The prime minister of Israel doesn't hold, is not Jewish? I, I, I was under that impression. That, I mean, he doesn't wear the yarmulke or you, the kippah, or, you know, he doesn't, I mean, he, he can't, I, I, he can't observe Shabbos. How could he? Well, answer me this. How is Jared Kushner Orthodox? I don't know either. Is he really? Yes. So, again, there is a sense like this. I'm not a person to go and judge. I'm not no, I'm not talking about judging. I'm just saying that they that he doesn't. And, you know, but then again, under the weekends, they do disappear. You don't even though look, this is look, we're being pretty frank here. Jared is running a, a large portion of the country. I mean, it's kind of it's not talked about, but Trump is you, you see him on the Twitter and doing the rallies, but the actual job, the work like, you know, you actually have a job to do. You know what I mean? Like pick up the phone, call this guy, do this, that Jared and Ivanka do the work. You know, OK. Uh, we're going to get into politics. I mean, well, but I'm saying this is not, I don't even think this is politics. This is just like, re, you know, like what's going on. You know, we see. I don't, know, I, don't know what they, I don't know what they do in the background. Well, obviously, when they come up with deals and stuff like that, what happened is then they interview Jared and he knows everything what's going on. It's like he was the one doing it, all the, all the work, behind, you know, just not front and center, you know. All right. If you want to hold that way, you can hold that way. But the main, the main ideology here is that. <laughs> I'm going to skip over this, guys, because I can't get into politics here. Because if I'm going into politics, forget it. We're going to hold it. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get into politics. I'm just, only, on only because of his, the, you know, we're finished. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I'm just saying that, like, we can't, we can't uh, speak into that one. We can, uh, but yeah, Jared basically, um, and is the prime minister. Yes, they are Jewish. Yes. Um, so again, um, are they Orthodox? Jared Kushner is Orthodox. Um, he does keep kosher. As far as I know, as far as the media and so on and so forth, he keeps kosher. He keeps the Sabbath. If you want to get into that, we'll get into that also. And um, so on. But his children do go to yeshiva. Yes. So. Now, what's that school? That what's the school he went to? They have the Yeshiva University. It's in Manhattan, Christmore. right? They, yes. The what? No. Oh, they have, yeah, they have YU. Yeah, Yeshiva University in Manhattan. But Yeshiva University, believe it or not, is just a regular university that has like more of a Jewish component to it. Oh, so they have secular Jews or Reformed Jews that go there. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I mean, it's in Manhattan, so they have. To, I mean, you know, you know, Manhattan. You would probably say, obviously, is more Reformed Jews in Manhattan. Then obviously Brooklyn is going to be more of of orthodox, yeah. right? You would, yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, that's just just the way it is. I mean, you could, if you want to talk political, I guess you could say more reform is more liberal, and Manhattan's basically liberal, and you come more to Brooklyn's more conservative in the sense, and that's it. Yeah. Um, can Jews only marry other Jews? Because Ivanka had to convert. Yes, she did have to convert. And yes, you would have to be Jewish to marry another Jew. But again, 
that will depend in orthodoxy when it comes to conservatism okay here we're going to touch upon this ivanka had to convert to orthodoxy converting to orthodoxy is not an easy feat um it's a three four or five year process depending on how you go about it and it's very very grueling and very strict and so on and so forth um Conservative reform are much, much, much more lenient. Um, that's, again, another main difference. Um, I don't think even reform, you need to be Jewish. Um, but conservative, I know you do. Um, yeah, but the we don't, we're, we're not missionary type of, type of religion. We're not coming to say, come, keep our, what we keep and become religious and so on and so forth. No, we're more like, Guys, we keep 613 commandments. Stay away. Keep your seven or what you have to keep, and let's call it a day, you know? Now, you, you went on the birthright trip? Have I ever you gone on the birthright trip? No, but I did. Oh. I had a three-year sabbatical year in Israel, so I was there. Oh, so not the one with the special program, but you went there just on something different. Not the one that everybody goes was you know which one I'm right talking about. right so yeah birthright's another program that believe it or not is funded mainly by Christians yeah birthright's and, funded by Christians in order to actually get all the Jews to Israel yeah and and they come back with all the T-shirts with the the army from the t or the Israeli army you know when everybody comes back with those T-shirts that they just came back right yeah for sure no those T-shirts are funny yeah my bro my brother's in the Israeli army right now mm-hmm. Yep. Wow. They're on full lockdown over there, believe it or not. They're not allowed to uh, maneuver around at all. Yeah. And there's conflict. And, and, and obviously, th there's probably even more conflict there now, too, because they're locking down. And, and the people there, the people who are, who are ultra Orthodox, see them, they want to, you know, it's their holiday, too. So, you know, the government's being strict on them, also. You know, that's happening. That's. Uh, right happen in a lot of places you know steve you lived in brooklyn uh, well in new york i don't know where in new york could be williamsburg could be brooklyn because you're mainly near the hasidim and they smell of bo <laughs> so i can attest to them do they shower yes okay i i am a nurse and i deal with hasidim a lot because again i'm in the new york population i deal with all types of people a lot um body bo is personal hygiene their main problems if you want to say is believe it or not they wear a lot black of garments in the summer. they wear heavy stuff yeah when you wear a black wool coat in the summer and a black hat black attracts the the the, the, the heat the light so you're going to be sweating a lot you wonder how you know somebody is you know, going to, um, you know, how, how you survive in the summer when it, you know, when it's like a hundred degrees out and they have a black outfit on. Yeah. Well, but that's mainly the reason there's no, no problem with showering whatsoever or bathing rules. Do it as much as you want, as much as you need, however you hold of it. Mm -hmm. now, cool. you've been... Go. I'm sorry? What? Now, have you been, to the um, the north, are you familiar with the North Shore at all, Long Island, or not really? You know, like the I like the great neck. No, but I'm saying the people because you know there's people much yes. there. The people are much different. It's like people uh, Middle East. It's not uh, you know, like the Five Towns is more Ashkenazi Jewish. Yes. Okay, I'll explain. The North, the north Shore, you're gonna have more Middle Eastern. You gotta have people who are, um, I don't know, like uh, from Iran, people from, uh, I don't know where else. You know what I'm talking about. It's it's so, a, it, and that's different too. So well, it is different and not different. Again, as I said, we're all Orthodox, so we all keep the same rules, the same concepts. We all keep the Sabbath. We all keep all the holidays. Um, where it differs is basically a little bit in prayer, um, and a little bit in customs on like what you wear, what, what they wear and mainly in prayer, 
really. There's not not much more than that. And just prayer. Like they say, they add a little bit to, or and we subtract a little bit to. I'm of Sephardic descent, which means I'm basically I have the Middle Eastern part. My father is Egyptian, and um, I mean you could say there, there are Jews from Iraq, Iran, um, Egypt. Go, go through all the whole Middle East. Anyways, so that's the Sephardic Jews. Mainly they kept um, different, They their prayers differed uh, slightly, believe it or not, just slight differences. It's not even crazy differences. I could daven in an Ashkenaz, I could daven, I could pray in an Ashkenaz synagogue with no problem whatsoever. Um, Ashkenaz is coming mainly from Poland, Germany, and more of Europe. And they, again, it's only, the only reason that things differed was because of customs. Customs changed a little bit only because of location. Hence the Hasidim mainly came from Russia. And you see them with the strimals, that's their furry hats. So that's, I mean, that's mean to Russia. So that's where it all comes down for them with their furry hats. Uh, if you look at more of a European, you would see that they have the black hats, the black top hats. Um, but if you look at the Spartic, you don't see them with anything. They ain't wearing okay. turbans. <laughs> you know, otherwise they would wear the turbans coming down. But yeah, that's a difference in that. That was one of the, I was talking about food wise. That was probably, yeah. um, one another, of the closest guys. Thing that changed. One of the guys, the closest guys who I knew, who he lived in the area. Um, actually they do have the Sephardic, we went to that Sephardic temple that's right there in Cedarhurst. Right, right down the road from where yep, the picture. That's, that's where the that's where, I, that's where I was praying. Yeah, yeah. That's where we we went there. We went for um, for uh, for the bar mitzvah, for this guy. His I don't know if his name. The guy's name was Effie. I don't know if that's short for something. It is short for something. Yeah, a Hebrew and, name called Ephraim. But okay. Yeah, yeah. His name was Effie, and he he was and it he was it was very funny because. He used to come into our restaurant where we worked in Rockville Center. Okay. Oh. That's just north of the, you know, so in that area, we have a lot of people that come from the five towns to come. People who really don't eat kosher, they, they go up north to, to where we were, to the, to the, to the Catholic town of Rockville Center. That's okay. like the headquarters for the, for the for Catholicism on Long Island. And, uh, this guy, Effie, he used to come in and visit my manager. So we used to talk all the time. And my manager was Egyptian. And it was the same age. They all they were both the same age and they grew up the same. They came to the United States around the same time. So they had so much in common. And, you know, they, they both really did not keep their customs. Like, it was very, it was, it was very, here's like a very odd situation. Because here's this guy who, he was Jewish. You know, his Effie, you know, from the... Um, you know, he was a, uh, a Sephardic. Okay. His wife, he was born in Israel. His wife was born in Morocco. And he would come in and he was friendly with the manager who was Egyptian. And it was funny because the Egyptian manager, he was Muslim and he would drink like Johnny. They, they used to love Johnny Walker Black Label. So they used to sit and we had a back patio like at the end of the night and tell old stories about the old days, you know. On the other, on the other side, so they would, they, they would smoke tons of cigarettes. I'm sure you know you have family members. Okay. So far to keep, right? No. Hookah mainly. Okay, fine. So make the story short is that the he he would eat, uh, you know, because he would kind of keep kosher, right? like he would just not eat the okay. meat. He would come in and he would eat like just pasta with sauce. He just would eat no, um, nothing meat wise. So and the other also, guy that also depends what? on okay fine I'll I'll hit on top of that okay yes and his kids and, and it was very interesting because uh the guy who was uh, who we thought was very liberal because he was muslim Egypt, uh egyptian he would drink 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 and then um but like certain things he was very strict on but then certain things he wasn't strict on like we used to laugh about that we used to be like this guy, he sits there and drinks all day. I thought he Muslim, you're not supposed to drink. But then, like, it just, it just like he was just picking and choosing which, which uh, uh, things you're not supposed to do. But anyway, they were very good friends. 
And one day he was work. They had the, the bar mitzvah on a Saturday or night. And what happened was long he asked short. me, make a long story short. That's why I had to drive down to that down there by the uh, right off the peninsula, the, uh, the Sephardic temple, because right. he wanted me to bring him there because the guy didn't have a car because he was a drunk, the manager. So he's like, please bring, bring Mike down there. You know, and then we got down there. We got to see the whole place, big place, and that's where they had this big ceremony, live music. This believe it, believe it or not, I think that that's so far that huge Sephardic temple over there. I, I'm pretty sure it's reform. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's what that is. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they. I'm pretty sure they're reform over there. Uh, yeah. But you touch upon the fact that uh, here, Josh asks, "It's kosher turkey bacon, kosher turkey bacon." Yes, if you have t- Bacon that's turkey, it's kosher. I mean, it's not coming from a pig. We're just not, we're not allowed to eat pork whatsoever. Um, again, it goes into laws of kosher. Um, basically, animals, you're not allowed to eat anything that doesn't have split hooves and choose its cut. If it does one of them, like the pig has split hooves, but it doesn't chew its cut, it's not kosher. It needs to do both. Um, but again, I'm going into laws here, people. It's a little, little too much. Uh, but again, no, no. I, I teach their own. I mean, people. Some people eat out. They would eat out. Um, they would eat out dairy. Uh, some people are more strict on dairy, less strict on. Well, most people are strict on meat. Um, but again, there's a lot of laws when it comes to kosher. Um, a lot, and it's not just the rabbi blessing it. It has nothing mainly to do with the rabbi blessing it. It has a lot to do with um, the way they cut the animal, the way they, um, the who's watching the process. Not not meant. I mean, at the time of cutting, there is a blessing said, but at most, I mean, no. But I like, think I think they mean by the blessing. Like I believe, I think I had a friend who worked at a kosher restaurant, and that the rabbi had to, like. He had to be there when they opened the place up. You know, you know what I mean. Yeah, I hear, I hear. Yeah, is that? I don't, I don't know that. I'm not sure, but I just remember that what happened was they were working at this restaurant, and the rabbi was late for some reason, and they couldn't open up. They had to wait for this guy to show up. Right, and they called him a somebody who watches over. It's and that's that's a word in Hebrew. Um, somebody to watch over. You're basically watching over all the non-Jewish people who are cooking and you don't want them to bring non-kosher food into the restaurant. Uh, and you have to, you have to be very strict on that. And they always have, even if it's a Jew, Jewish owned and there are Jews in there, they has to have mashkiach, somebody who you could trust that will watch over and say, I test that so on and so forth. And that's how you get into all different types of kosher. Uh, who's you, who's watching over? Do we trust the guy who's watching over and so on and so forth? Do we trust them? Now, would, would you eat at a place like Ben's or is that too corporate for you? I wouldn't eat Ben's cause well, I don't even know what the, I don't know what the kosherness of it is. I don't know. Again, there are different, what I would hold of kosher or what I would not hold. I don't know what Ben's. It's probably, it's probably one of the biggest chains, but I don't know if they have them on you. They have them in Queens. They have them in Manhattan. They used, they have a couple in Long Island. Oh, but you, you, depend, you know, the, depend, you know like, franchises like that, especially like I know McDonald's in Israel, they have a few kosher ones. McDonald's here in in New York, and never flew. They tried, it just never flew. Um, Nathan's, yeah, they was, tried Nathan's, that was kosher also once upon a time. It didn't work. Well, out. that's who invented Nathan's. Nathan was he was Jew. Nathan, that's yeah, him. But they do non kosher food, so simple as that. <laughs> Could be invented by a Jew, but <laughs> doesn't yeah. help. Krillin, you converting? Yeah, next week. You know, it is, and it is kind of funny because we we do have. Um, yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Like you don't like you can have non-kosher food and be, be Jewish, obviously. Like we have, there's like there's like a restaurant chain out out here called Smoking Al's. It's like a barbecue place. They have, poor, you know, the guy's name was Al Horowitz. And okay. It's, you know, and it's they have barbecue food. You know pork ribs and stuff like that so obviously you know so tracy touched upon a big big topic what is the dress code for women it depends it depends if the woman is married or not mainly um it would add a few things um 
also it depends on how religious you want to be. If you want to be super religious, then I could give you the what the Hasidim hold. If you want to be more my religious, um, basically covering dress code is basically the women have to cover till their elbows um, and pa past their elbows and past their knees and not show their collarbone. Um, that's basically the dress code. Um, and when it comes to after they get married, this is where it gets a little more complicated because they have to cover their hair. They're not allowed to show their hair at that point. Um, and um, with the Hasidim, some of them, guys, not me, not my wife, and so on, but the women shave their heads. So I don't have any insight yeah, that into that. Don't, don't ask yeah. me, and so on. But my wife does cover her hair. Um, so most of them put on wigs, and sometimes the wigs are more fancier than their hair. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted to ask because I seen the wigs, and I'm like, wow, this woman has a – she couldn't make it. Oh, her hair could never – I could tell it's a wig, and then it's like, you know, like you said. Another, the, another, wig is another answer. Another answer that gets very complicated on topic, um, because it differs on different rabbis who hold different things and different customs and so on and so forth. Every, uh, everything comes into it. But yes, they have to cover their hair, whether it means of just wearing something to cover their hair, or wearing a scarf. Uh, some women, if you see in Israel specifically, they have a nice way of doing it. Um, and mostly in New York, it's mostly the wigs, mainly the wigs. But, and, but now you're just talking about just the certain, I, well, and you, and you have to go back and forth because people I'm sure coming in and out. You're not talking about the reform. You're right. Who are again, I'm not, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about people who are not religious. I'm again, you could be religious and keep kosher and keep the Sabbath and keep the holidays and just dress the way you want. That's rare. No, that's not rare at all. Not here. Not here. Oh, not go to Long Brooklyn. Island. Not in Long Island. Go to Brooklyn. Go to Brooklyn <laughs> Parkway area. You'll see it mainly. Um, it, it's it's just, again. It depends on everybody. It depends on what they hold and what they feel their their level is and what their connection to God is. We're not going to go. I again, whether they're doing right or wrong, I'm not the one to judge. And that's just how it is. But I again. You you would you would see it, and it depends on the person on their level and how they feel, their connection mm -hmm. to God. Uh, as best can, sorry for the uh, Charles, but thankful for the moment. Uh, sorry for Ashkenazi. There you go. That's a big one. We touched upon that. Uh, wigs. Uh, while they're out, what is the significance of wearing a wig? Okay. Yeah. She, you Let's know, talk. she's from Long Island, Karen, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Karen, I did yeah. not know you're from Long Island. But we touched upon it, so it's perfect timing. What is the significance of wearing a wig? There is not necessarily a significance, but there is a law that basically states that once a woman gets married, again, when they're single, you can show their hair. But once they get married, it's considered as their hair, which represent like it's part of their beauty and so on it should be hidden for their husband specifically and the way it's hidden is it's covered so that's that's where it comes in from there i have to try to go down slowly so i don't miss anybody how do you spell yakov benz how do you spell what oh you're gonna have to hit me up again i'm going slowly through this so what's the thing so so then there, there was a shmata that what curtis always says a shmata is basically a well. Again, you could refer to it like a shmata on your head. Yeah, you you're wearing a rag on your head. Shmata means rag in Yiddish, basically. Yeah, yeah, because that's what Curtis always says. Yeah, you know? Curtis. See, I know a lot of people wear in New York, <laughs> so that's uh, one of the radio talk show hosts here at local. Yeah. Question: With Christmas being such a dominant holiday in general, how do Jewish people view the grand scale of the holiday? We don't view it at all. Um, it. Uh, <laughs> To us, basically, again, we start, as I was speaking with Josh the other day, we start basically at, I think he, correct me if I'm wrong, Josh, at Matthew. We, I mean, we don't, we don't go past the Old Testament. Um, we stop right there. So anything that has to do with Jesus and so on is not, not about us. We don't, we don't 
hold past that. Why's when, where, why's, and how, and all that conflict, we're going to stay out of because not a topic for here. But we, I mean, we just, we, we just have, hold it as a legal holiday, basically. We don't, we don't celebrate it. I'm actually working on Christmas. I was actually thinking of actually doing a listing live for whoever else doesn't keep, keep the holiday, just doing the listing live throughout if anybody's interested. But that's, yeah. We and don't, there's we, also a lot of people who would watch anyway, because what happens is people want to get away from their families anyway on Christmas. They're like, <laughs> their families are like, all right, I spent enough time with one? Krillin, are you available yeah. Christmas Eve? <laughs> Yeah, you know it's kind of scary because it's like, you know, usually on Christmas my family lives in in uh, Pennsylvania. We usually drive down there to visit my family, you know my my you know my sister and her her kids and everything, and uh, you know with coronavirus because you know I have to worry, you know I worry too about my parents, you know, and because my sister has kids and you know they're like teenagers and they're running in the house and they have all these friends over and then they get sick, you know it's like, you know my father is. He's 75 years old. He has a pacemaker, diabetes. You know, like, if he gets it, he if he gets a bad case, he, you know, he could die. You know, it's not like, right. you know, he has those co comorbidities. So, you know, I'm not even, we're not even taking a chance. I hear, yeah, it's a tough time. Pandemic, it's not, not an easy feat for anybody. Yeah, uh, what about Jewish kids' impression of Christmas and having non-Jewish friends that celebrate Christmas? Uh, okay, so... We mainly are in a Jewish area. So basically what happens is is because Orthodox Judaism is what it is, we keep the Sabbath. Um, and due to keeping the Sabbath and mainly all the holidays, um, we are except for probably Hanukkah, we are restricted to doing anything electronic. Um, or any driving of a car, again, differs be between conservative and reform and orthodoxy. Um, conservative would drive to synagogue on the Sabbath. Orthodox is not even questionable. You wouldn't even consider that. Um, um, but again, I'm not out there to judge anybody. Uh, so when it comes to specifically our area that we live in, is we have to live by a synagogue. So... I live maybe a few blocks away from the synagogue. And the reason for that is because when it comes to every Saturday night, uh, Friday night, Saturday and Saturday morning, we got to be in synagogue. And we also have to be there three times a day. That's besides the point um, for prayers. But we're there Friday night, Saturday morning and Saturday afternoon. Uh, in between those times, we're us it's usually meals. Uh, like Friday night, you come home, you have a meal, go to sleep, wake up go to synagogue, then there's another meal, and then rest for a few hours, go back to synagogue, come back home, eat something, go back to synagogue, and then go home and you're done. That's work. basically the rotation. <laughs> That's a rotation. But anyways, to answer this question, um, my kids know of Christmas. I mean, they watch Daniel Tiger. They watch Paw Patrol. They watch whatever else is on Amazon Prime. Um, and so, I mean, they, they know it exists. They know that non-Jewish people keep it. Um, do they have friends necessarily who are not Jewish? I mean, they don't live in the area. So if they did live in the area, I wouldn't see a problem with it. I know I grew up, my brother grew up with, uh, with a lot of non-Jewish friends. I grew up with a bunch of non-Jewish friends. And all you guys... In Brooklyn? In Brooklyn. Uh, yes, yeah. I mean... Again, I also went. I also went to college. I also had so on and so forth. So, being in college and being its own, your your main frame is all non-Jewish people. I mean, you have to get. Uh, well, I work since I don't went to in Toro Washington. Is Jewish. What? What? Everybody I know who went to Toro is Jewish. I went to Toro, um, but said, I can yeah, tell you that there's a whole bunch of people that were not Jewish in my class. Yes, oh, a really? whole bunch of non-Jewish nurses that came out of Toro College. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. It's a great thing. Um, but I, I, what's their outlook on it? They know it exists. Whether they, they know they don't celebrate it. They know they have their holidays that they celebrate. They know that there's a non-Jewish, there are non-Jewish people out there, and they keep different things. That, that's that's the way I raise my kids. Now. I mean, we're not going to be judgmental on other people for no reason. I mean, everybody has their own religion and keeps whatever it is. I mean, I have a live with a pastor every <laughs> Tuesday night, people. 
But I was saying, but like, because like, so you never went to a before college as a child. You had never gone to school with with non Jews. Yes, I've never been to public school. I mean, there are there are people who became religious were in public schools, but I've never been to a public school. See, because me, where I went to school, I probably went. I, I, you know, I know some people they think I'm talking out of school as the expression, but my if I showed you my yearbook, I have probably the most diverse group of anybody in. A, I I would compare my yearbook if you want to talk about diversity to any uh, when I graduated my high school of anybody in America, because we had people. Obviously, we did not have, you know, there was there wasn't anybody who was. You know, no, there was an Orthodox, obviously, but people who were, you know, secular reform Jews, people who were Catholics, Protestants, you know, Muslims, Chinese, you know, we, we, we had everybody in my school. You know what I mean? That was one thing. And uh, but as far as the people who were reform Jews, like one of my best friends, he was re- reform, but he never he was not, you know, they never really. Again, reform. Yeah. Again, reform is a different, a different. I know, it's totally, it's not. I, I wouldn't even bring in the category. If anybody's reform or anybody knows something about reform and wants to bring him on here, ask him all those questions. I have a whole bunch to ask him. Yeah. See, what happened was he was. We actually. That's where I met him at a Jewish temple, a reform temple. There was okay. a nursery school, that was right. around the corner from my house. So I went. I went to nursery school eating challah bread for lunch you know what i mean that's that's where you know because that was the um that was what it was around the corner from my in my neighborhood that was the nursery school you know what i mean so right. make the that's where i met him and other people who were jewish and we became friends and we went to school you know uh public school together and like as far as christmas now they always had hanukkah so it wasn't like like they were able. They had yeah, gifts but Hanukkah too. Hanukkah doesn't compare to Christmas. I'm sorry. No, no, no. But I'm just saying. But but my point is, when you're a kid, you you, you care about one thing. Okay, Nintendo is coming out. Am I gonna? Is my mom gonna get me Nintendo or something? Whatever it is. And for Hanukkah, it's the same difference. Am I gonna get? And that was the best part. Was I went to school. I know many mixed faith. I, I, I can't I can't even count how many people who were Jewish and Catholics you know that's how they that's how they were they were raised and right. they always double dipped because they're like oh I, I'm getting my presents for Hanukkah I'm getting my presents for Christmas that's all they gave a shit about it had not any of the rituals or anything it did none of that even mattered like if you go in the south and in like where I where I was actually today, you sometimes you see me. I go to that Greek place. Yeah. There's that. There's that. It's oh, it's the best. There's that. If you go further along, Island, there's a town called Merrick, and then there's Belmore and the other towns. There's a lot of people who are, you know, it's it's Jewish, or Catholics, and a lot of them are married together. So you have Jewish. T- you, you I mean, like you'll have Jewish temple, and then across the street you're gonna have. Catholic Church, you know what I mean, like right, right down, right, literally, yeah. Like you have Curie Vars, is next door to two, you know, the Catholic Church is the next street. Then there's two huge temples right next, to, and I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know which one, if one is a Reformed temple and one is not. That's a. I should probably. I will, but I always make sure I I know it when they're doing their rummage sales. Remember we were talking about that. <laughs> Cause they, they, they do the never, rum- I've never seen anybody. I have never seen like a Jewish place actually have. Are you kidding not me? Either. They have the best. They have, have some of the an best. Hour and, a half down to, and when I come to you, believe it or not, you don't even come and say hi. That's very insulting, by the way. What do you mean? You when were, I, I, I went around. So it's the holiday. So I ended up taking a trip to my uncle's house who lives in Woodmere. So I sent Krillin a picture, sent him a picture saying, Krillin, I am here. But I can't talk to you right now, so I'll talk to you after the holiday. So I spoke to him after the holiday. I told yeah. him I'm here. He's like, I'm in my basement. <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't near you at the time. You said I'm I'm cutting off, and then I texted you on Sunday. That's where I was. On uh, you're like, oh, I'll be I'll be back Sunday night. So yeah. I texted you. I figured you're gonna well, be around I Sunday. Back, I was back Sunday. No, Sunday night. Sun, no, Sunday morning. Oh, you figured I'd be around on Sunday. 
No, so Sunday night. Sunday night's when the holiday ended. Yeah, but everybody was – when I went to that estate sale, when I showed you that, I went to Lawrence, which Lawrence is, you know. Yeah, but buck. you know what? Believe it or not, I mean, I don't know of a religious people who would have any type of sale on a sun, a Sunday that they know it's a holiday with mainly the Jews walking around. You said that there are babies in carriages walking around. So the main Yeah, they, those people did not come in. They did not come in. It was of just a random. Were, but like – but again, if they were if they were smart, they would do like uh they would do an estate sale mainly on a day that people yeah, but can't the, come in. Yeah, but the way, the way it works with the estates, a lot of times somebody say this is how the estate sales work is that they sell the house and then right when they sell the house, they usually sell it first, then sell all their stuff. Okay, the furniture and this and that. All right, so man. what happens is they have the state they sell the house. And then there's usually a mad rush to then just sell everything. So that's what happens is they um, – it's a matter of timing. It's like, okay, we have to get rid of everything because a lot of times – I mean those houses are going for – I mean that house I was in has got to be a million dollars. You know, so – I wouldn't easy. be surprised. Yeah, with, with $35,000 a year taxes. Yeah, taxes. <laughs> Yeah. Crazy people yeah, out Lar there. But, but also, but that's also, but that's Lawrence. You know what I mean? The, the certain areas, Lawrence, Hewlett Harbor, those are, you know, like that guy. He, what's his name? Effie. He used to, right. he used to cry because he would have, to, he would spend. Uh, his taxes were like fifty thousand plus in Hewlett Harbor. You know. But meanwhile, it's funny. It, we used to hate him because he would come in, and like cry about like things like oh my god i have to pay that fifty thousand taxes meanwhile we were all like man we wish we could afford to pay yeah well, i could afford to pay the fifty thousand dollars tax. it's funny because he used to come in he used to, i remember this was like when i was working in a restaurant i don't know six years ago seven years ago and he was crying big time do you remember when uber taxis became really big so they, they started like blowing up right so he owns like 25 taxi medallions and now for people who don't know and that are in the chat, if you own 25 taxi medallions, you're making a lot of shekels. Not know? anymore. Not well, anymore. Taxi medallions went down because of Uber. Well, but, but yeah, Uber schmuber, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, but, but Effie, no, but beforehand, he was making big, big, big bucks, you All know. Right. And, then, like, and, then, and, then, and then Cohen had a hand in it as well. Yeah, exactly. Oh, um, you know he's—that's where Lawrence. he's from too. He, you know, he's he's from Lawrence. You said no, Cohen, no. Michael Cohen. Yeah, you know that's where he's he's from there. I don't know. And All right, let's go back to topic because otherwise we're we're just never gonna end. <laughs> oh, I thought we were talking about the business Uber. <laughs> we'll get back to it eventually. Uh, Tracy wants to know: Are there any nightly rituals, for lack of a better term, during the Sabbath? I think you're referring to uh, nightly rituals. Not not specifically. Uh, I mean, the Sabbath specifically is meant for rest, uh, for lack of a better term. Uh, I don't know what you're referring to specifically. Um, let me know. I'm going to keep going down. I'm going down slowly in the chat, so that's why I'm not picking up everybody, but I'm trying to get all the I questions. I guess what there. she means, like, when you go home Friday night. Like, what time do yeah. you get home Friday night? Depends on how the sun is rising. In, no, well, it depends. It depends if well, it's like, summer or winter. Winter. Oh, here's another concept. The Sabbath starts at sundown. So if the sun's going down at 4 o'clock, uh, then we start at 4 o'clock. But we end earlier because we would end in following day on Saturday earlier because sundown till sundown on Saturday. So it depends. I could be home by six o'clock, five o'clock. I could be home by 10 o'clock. Well, mainly nine. I don't think 10. 10 is way too late. But okay. What time so do I get home? Get, when you get home, like say in the fall, like when you get home. You know, if you go there at five o'clock, six o'clock, where I think whatever it was six, seven o'clock, whatever it was, and then you stay there what for two hours? You said an hour, two hours? No, I go, I go to, I go to synagogue for about an hour, prayers, and after prayers, you come home. I have the kids running all over the place, so we got to tend to the kids. 
um, and we sing and dance with them a little bit, and then we sit all down by the table. If it was that simple and it really worked out, that would be nice, but kids are kids. Uh, <laughs> we sit down by the table, we eat, and uh, we put the kids to bed, and we go to sleep. Yeah, early. Well, because that's the thing you're not supposed because like the whole no, idea right. is every family, so no, there's no nothing. So yeah, we would basically have books. Like I just showed Josh the other day that I, that I bought a specific book that I could read, read while I was like, why'd you buy it? You could get it probably online for free. I said, I bought it because I have no choice when it comes to the Friday. Yeah. But that's yeah. it. Oh, but then, okay. So then Saturday morning. Then you said you go for you go there and then come home for lunch and then go back. So Saturday morning at that point would be Saturday morning. Wake up, synagogue. Synagogue's probably later until probably until eleven. So we start at nine, end about eleven. Um, you could either hang out with friends for a few minutes for about an hour before I walk home. Yeah, come home and again we sit down for a meal, um, lunch at that point. I mean, if you wake up earlier, you could have breakfast. Um, before you go to synagogue and then after that, it's basically free time until the afternoon prayers, uh, free time, meaning again, we're in the Jewish area. So everybody else around us is, as Krillin said before, you, you, you saw, he saw everybody in Lawrence literally walking around with strollers and so on and so forth. And everybody walks around and goes to their friends and hangs out. It's 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 a, it's a gathering time. It's a time to again. This is the main reason that we're having this problem with this pandemic over here because now we're in holiday season, and everybody gets together. Families get together for the holidays, and you can't stop it. And people spread, and that's what happens. That's why. Yeah. That's why it's happening, and that's why they're hitting on us. But yeah, it's. Um, uh, but he, but what was I saying? Um, good question. You know. How strict are you when it comes to food? Pretty strict, believe it or not. Pretty strict. Um, as far as food on the outside, that's not prepared in your house. It has to have a good. It has to have. It has to have a hashgacha, which that word basically means it has to have a rabbi or somebody a mashkiach, as we spoke about before, somebody who's going to be watching over the process. Yeah. In the restaurant, so a lot of like there are a lot of different organizations like the OU. Orthodox Union or the Star K. Um, these are basically labels that if you look on your food, I'll go back in the house in a minute. Yeah, same like um, Curtis. I mean, what are these things? Remember Curtis was talking oh, about this? I have balance of nature. I have balance of nature. <laughs> have balance of nature. Um, let's oh, go you want to laugh too? Speaking think, of the radio, I'll tell you real quick. Say goodbye to the sukkah. We're going to leave now. We're going to go back into the house to find some kosher food to show you guys. But yeah, um, basically the kosher is that you have, I mean, most of the food here, oh, we have Tropicana sitting on the table. That's a perfect example. So it would have, let's say, an OU on it. Here, let's see. See, this has an OK. An OK is OK. I don't know if you can see it right there. See, OK on the Tropicana bottle. That means it's kosher. Um, stuff that I prepared at home, like fruits, vegetables, and so on and so forth, are fine. If here, there's another one. This is basically veggie sticks for the kids. Got it from Costco. So you would see in the back, right over there, it says OU kosher, certified kosher. I would have to make the screen big, but I'm holding my computer with one hand and doing that. So I hope you guys see it. I'll try to come in closer. Certified kosher. There you go. So that's the OU. So there are different organizations Costco. basically. What? I know Costco. I see they, you know, they have that big one that they have a lot of stuff. Kosher. Yeah. Costco, of course, because they're mainly that you're mainly in the Jewish area over there. Yeah, and that well, there's that one big one down there, but oh, but all over, you know, there's people. I could tell when I go in because I remember all these people. I go into everybody's house. I've been into hundreds and thousands of houses, so I, I see everybody's home and I get to see uh, what they have in there. I peek around. I like, oh, what do these guys have back there? What do they got? You know. Because when you're at the estate sale, you're not, you know, you, you you're buying stuff, but you're also, you know, because like I would show Tommy, I would say, oh Tommy, do a screen share, let's see the house, so we, you know, check it out, you know, because you always got to do it before you go to the estate sale, you go in, you you know, check out what they got. 
I don't know. I like going to Goodwills and stuff. I, I like staying away from like those state sales and stuff. I'm not comfortable going to people's houses yet. Although but I do it for a living, which is the funny part. Uh, See, that's another thing too. That's why I was laughing is that the other guy, remember we were talking about different people from different areas, Jewish people from different, the one guy is from Iran. And I, he's, he's, I would see him on a Saturday at the estate sales. And I would always wonder, I was like, why would I, see? maybe they leave early on Saturday, certain people that they don't stay the whole day. Uh, could it be that he, he doesn't, it couldn't be possible that he doesn't, this is a guy. And you know what? He would always wear his yarmulke, right? Would always be the most intricately designed. Like I know that you only wear black. Me? I don't only wear black. I only seen you wear black. That's yeah, it. The black yarmulke? Yeah. Yeah. But that's nothing to it. I mean, it's just what fits me nicely. From this guy. Flashy. This guy, he would have these ones with these patterns that go out like this coming out. Okay. Like the most, in, this is the guy I told from Iran. The most right. intricately designed. Well, I said, oh my God, this thing is like, it must have taken so much work to make this. They do. They're very expensive, believe it or not. The yeah. the knitted yarmulkes are very expensive, especially when the ones that are handmade. Yeah, this one was beautiful, and and, and, the, and you know what is the colors just like, you know. Oh. Yeah, it just. But that's what I was weird. I saw him on a Saturday afternoon because I he he. This is what he's always at the. Uh, we we always talk. Uh, I mean, obviously not about you know we don't talk about religion. Okay. Um, he's got a business. He actually supplies companies for dollar stores. Anyway, long story. That's another story. But uh, but he's always there. I don't think he resells. I think he just buy. See, a lot of people go to the estate sales to buy for yourself. Remember, there's people like you can go into the house and there's people that have the the laundry detergent and they go in there and you buy the laundry detergent for half. You know, if it's you know ten dollars for or fifteen dollars for a large you know uh, detergent, you buy right. it for five bucks. You know what I mean? So you can go there. You could save. Thousands of dollars, you know, and it's fun. Tracy, we do have a lot of kosher delis and a lot of different kosher restaurants around here. A lot. I mean, they're all suffering now, but we have a lot of them. Yeah, this I was saying, on the, yeah, on the this North Shore, there's that, yeah, there's that place. There's a place called Kolbeh, C O L B E H. That's like, it's oh, like, a that's, like that's, that's Iranian. Yeah, that's the one up north. That's like yeah. that's the one that's very well known. Everybody goes to. What's the concept behind breaking the glass? The concept behind breaking the glass at a Jewish wedding is that okay, very 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 long story short, New York talk. Um, you basically there was a temple once upon a time, um, and the that was the big temple in Israel at where the Muslim mosque is right now and where the Western wall is. Um, there was a big temple over there that was destroyed. And we always want to keep in our mind that, that our mind is with Jerusalem and our mind is the fact that we lost our temple and we lost uh, the times that we were serving God at that point. And since we always want to keep in our mind even at a, an extent of a wedding, which is mainly very, very upbeat and amazing, we still want to bring ourselves down to a little bit to have a remembrance that we're of the temple. And that's basically the story behind breaking the wine glass. Please Mazel give us a take. Yeah, Mazel Tov. <laughs> a term Jew is slander. Or not. Jew is not slander. You can call me a Jew. That's what it is. I mean, I, I wonder sometimes if calling an Arab is slander. Person, Arab. I don't, I don't know. See, but a Jew, you can call me a Jew. It's fine. That's it's not slander. Also, Seinfeld accepted in the Jewish community or is considered Id, uh, idolistic. Um, okay. So you would have idiotic. to. Idiotic. Uh I don't know Seinfeld in the sense that I just never watched it. Um, but in the sense that I would watch it, I don't see a problem with it. I don't think, I mean, again, it's a movie, it's a show, whatever you want to call it. It's well, but let me cut you. Let me just say Seinfeld is, he is the, 
stereotype first. Remember how we talk about people who are, say, Jewish, who are Reformed, secular, Reformed, or that are from right. Manhattan. Yes. And that, actually, the area that, that that's exactly what I was talking about before is that area I was talking about the the where I eat that Greek food in Merrick. That's where he's from. That like that's where he really is from, Jerry. And you know where it's a lot of people. They call it the town is called Massapequa, but they call it Matza Pizza. You know, we hear Curtis say that Matza Pizza, because is you know. Believe it or not, that, that, that we do have that on Passover. Passover, we're restricted to only eat matzo. We cannot eat anything that um, has uh, leaven in it. Basically, anything that rows in an oven and so on. Like even cookies are very restrictive and stuff like that. So we would have pizza, which basically you would have the matzah, which is already cooked and everything. Put cheese and sauce on it, dump it in the oven. And you got matzah pizza. Matza, yeah, that's what you said. Or you would call somebody who's like half Jewish, half half Italian. You would, say pizza, you would say you're a pizza bagel. Pizza you know. bagel. Uh, are we allowed to eat all fruits and all vegetables or all go? I mean, I, if you want to get even more, if you want to go strict, then you have to go, um, then you would have to go basically to look into it if they have any bugs and so on and so forth. But other than that, fruits and vegetables are all fine. They grow from the ground. Yeah. Uh, dress code is kind of like Damish. I don't know what their dress code is, so I wouldn't know. It's like the Hasidim. Hit the like so, button and follow. Please subscribe. If yeah. you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button. And uh, if you haven't hit the like, I haven't either. But hit it. <laughs> I'll hit it when I get to it. But uh, it's similar. You talking about the Amish. It's black and white. Similar. Uh, it's black and white? I didn't know. Well, you know what? I mean, the more of the stricter people, they would wear only black and white. It's just it's just what – it's again, it's just uh, what they used to when they have a dress code in order to actually keep to. That's what the uh, more religious people do. And you don't wear the shawl. Uh, for prayers? Well, during the day. Like, you know, some people, they always wear it. Nobody always wears the shawl. Well, maybe they're coming no. back from somewhere where I see them and they have it. Yes, hanging. yes, yes. They're coming back from synagogue and yes, yeah. then they wear it to go home. But yeah, I have a shawl. If anybody wants to see, I'll show them in a second. You know, I might as well show it now. Guys, I know you're all asking a whole bunch of questions, a whole bunch of stuff over there. I'm going to get to it eventually. Yeah. If not this sure. time, then I'm going to have to save this chat, and we're going to have to answer all these questions on in part two of this. My prayer shawl. Uh, let's use this one. So I have one specifically for the week. They have one specifically for for the Sabbath. I'll show you the one for the Sabbath. It's quick. All right, the concept of the prayer shawl, basically, which is right over here. This is mine. Um, see, it has some nice fancy stuff over here. That's how you know that's the top. That's basically what it is. It's all just design. It goes like this. It goes around. And it goes on like that. Now, no, these... About... Is that what you're talking about? No, I'm, I'm talking about... But it hangs down the bottom. What do you mean hangs on the bottom? These things? No, but you don't see it on the top. You just see it. It looks like almost like it's tied around the waist. And then it, and, and, and then the, the strings you just see coming out of the shirt. Oh, that's a smaller version of this. And okay. that they wear all the time. Yes, I, I'm yeah. actually wearing one under my clothes. Yes. That basically. Yeah, that's what I meant. All right. So the concept behind that very simply is like this. There is a law that... Um, all four corner garments, hence the prayer shawl that I just showed you. All four corner garments are required to have a um, are required to have fringes, which are basically strings attached to the end. Again, all symbolic and all all stuff. Very complicated stuff. Um, very very long story short. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, again, I'm seeing myself using it. It's New York in me. Um, Long story short, again, so why do they wear it constantly? Is because if you're going to wear a four-corner garment, you're going to get a mitzvah. A mitzvah is something that, like, it's a reward up there uh, in the afterlife. Um, so they want to add those mitzvahs. And in order to add them, if you wear a four-corner garment, every second you're wearing it, you add an additional mitzvah. 
So they wear it constantly in order to add every second that they're wearing it. Uh, let's go further down here. Our marriages are arranged among more conservative groups. Uh, okay, that's a fun question to answer. Arranged marriages. Um, hold on. Let me just put this back because I need for some morning. Arranged marriages, I can't say don't happen. They do happen. Uh, more in the more of the Hasidic groups. In the more modern Orthodox, what happens is is basically would have like a matchmaker set you up. Um, it doesn't have to be like this. Again, you can meet a person randomly. I mean, you guys, you want to say a bar, in a bar, at a wedding, at a party. Um, so it could go either way that way, or you could or you could go through a matchmaker. A matchmaker says, "Oh, I know this girl," and you say, "Okay, set it up. Let me go out with her." You go out with her and. That's, believe it or not, how I got married, through a matchmaker. Somebody uh, I know set us up. Not the millionaire matchmaker. No, not the millionaire matchmaker. Not the millionaire Remember matchmaker. That yeah. <laughs> but it does still happen among the Hasidim. Um, you do still have an out, from what I understand, by them specifically. It's not fully arranged in the sense that you have to marry i mean you you meet the girl first you figure it out if it works great if it doesn't then move on to the next but again uh premarital sex <laughs> is a no-go by us also uh yeah, premarital yeah. touching is also a no-go by us yeah we'll have to get into that one somebody asked that question i'll get more in depth into that one if you want uh so that's why when the guy calls up on the right on the, the Curtis, you know, they were talking on the radio. He says, "Look, because the girl who's with him, I she's annoying. The girl uh, Juliet." Okay, right. And you know, she's like, "Oh, wh why can't they just put off?" Because she she doesn't. I mean, she's just oblivious about everything. You know, not just about. You know, you know, she's oblivious. She's like, "Why can't they just put these weddings off till next year?" And the guy calls up. He's like. You don't understand. They don't have boyfriend, girlfriend kind of situation. They got to get married. He's like, you don't understand. She's like, yeah, but what about next year? He's like, no, no, no. You, you don't get how this works. The caller is telling him. He's like, they got to get married. When it's their time to get married, they're getting married. That's it. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> so the women who shave their heads, do they have covered their boldness? Yes, they do. They actually sometimes have wigs also. Uh, to cover their boldness uh, as much as they can, at least. Um, am I allowed to say schmuck? Say what you want, but is it derogatory? Um, we don't use it. <laughs> I, have, I haven't heard it. Only like in. It basically means an idiot. What an what an idiot. Same thing. Wow. If you want to be a little bit more derogatory, fine. Where is it holding the derogatory? Uh, Levels. I have no idea. Schmuck Schumer. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, let's let's stay away from that politics. Oh, yeah. I, I I I have what to say. I have a lot what to say. My child's best friend would just had always had a holiday tree, but they called it a Hanukkah bush. Reform. Yeah. Definitely, <laughs> definitely Hanukkah bush falls into the reform category does not fall into the orthodox at all um reason being is because again they're more they want to be more like the non-jews and so on so they integrate different things and they created their hanukkah bush but uh wizard of uh, films question how do you keep the sabbath while on vacation i do um, believe it or not, I went to Puerto Rico uh, last January, which I was hopefully looking to do it again, but not. There are synagogues pretty much everywhere at this point. Chabad, which is a big organization, um, they basically have synagogues everywhere. Literally, if you go onto their website, you name it, you the you name the place, they'll have it. Nepal, my sister went to Nepal. They have a synagogue. so. Keeping kosher over there, you would keep it by them specifically. Uh, I went to Puerto Rico. There's a lot of kosher stuff. It's a part of the U.S. So there are a lot of kosher stuff in Puerto Rico. 
Uh, Meat-wise, was very difficult. Uh, they had to ship it in specifically from Brooklyn all the way to Puerto Rico. But that, that's Chabad. They do that. They do all that stuff for people who are vacationing and for people who go out to those places for, um, for business. I personally, what we did when we went to Puerto Rico, we took a luggage. One of our luggages was food, was meat that was frozen, uh, milks that were frozen, um, and so on. They went under the plane, and that's how we went with that. And when we got to the Airbnb that we were staying at, we basically, again, so another topic is, is that kosher also has to do with the utensils you use. So, like, I'm not allowed to use um, utensils that were used for, for pork. I have to use kosher utensils or utensils that were mainly used for kosher. If they're brand new, they're brand new. But if they're not brand new, then you have to, um, then you can't, you basically can't use them. Um, so we would, we went, we used plastics. Um, we bought like a burner and we brought a pot with us. So whatever we want to put in the pot, we can. Um, and we cooked whatever we wanted to cook just like that. I mean, we had a microwave. The microwave is fairly easy to make kosher. Um, so we made the microwave kosher. We used the microwave and that's how we went about it. It's not an easy feat, believe it or not, when everybody's in the pool, um, and yelling and, and you could hear everybody in the pool over the weekend and your kids are like literally running around the apartment and you have to just take them to like walk around the lobby to just air out because everybody else is in the pool and you want to go to the pool. It's not easy, but we do it. We make it happen. Um, they have some guys and do we usually, yes, you have to usually make sure if you're strict as I am, or I, if some people aren't strict, some people just don't care. They go wherever they want to go. Um, but people who are strict, um, try to find a synagogue to wherever they're going to be. Yes. But they exist. It's not like, you know, like I you know, said, if you're going to go to a place like Puerto Rico. Yes. Puerto Rico. I mean, you know, I was surprised that Nepal would have something, but Puerto Rico, obviously that's a, it's America. Number one, it's a vacation destination. So it's not like you go into, you know, some place that a lot of people don't go to, you know, on vacation. Right. No. So, no, most people go on. So, again, you if you want to say vacation, they also have they also have uh, a deal in New Jersey for the Sephardic Jews and like upstate New York for the Ashkenaz Jews mainly is like what happens in the summer. That's why I said before when we were starting this chat. A lot of people are going to escape to deal or to, which is this Jersey shore or go to upstate New York to hang out over there. So yeah, the Catskills, they're going to, they're going to bypass all of this stuff. So I don't even know what the government is thinking. Um, Wendy, welcome. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm late on the chat. I know I'm just going through slowly so I can catch all the questions. Do you think reform Jew is even Jewish? Uh, it's a complicated question. Um, personally, it's a very, it, it's complicated. It depends on the person, depends on what they keep and how far back their reform goes. Because when it comes to reform, um, them converting is not, their conversions are not accepted because they just say, you're Jewish. Congratulations. You just became Jewish. Just like that. So, I mean, by us again, as I said, it takes it's a five year process, and you have to really, really want it. It's not, it's not an easy feat. It's like getting the law degree. No, <laughs> you're just telling me, yeah, it is. <laughs> Chala is awesome. Yes, Chala, we have every Friday night and Saturday mornings. At the diner, they make the Chala French toast. Oh. Mm. As a kid, that always is present. I'm getting down, getting down. <laughs> Keep going. Yako, what do you think of Krill and Cyburns? Ah, oh, Cyburns is a good topic. Josh, he's, he's trying. He's trying. He's trying to, mi to, to mimic. <laughs> Cyburns, according to Jews. Um, shaving? All right. Uh, shaving. Men shaving. You're allowed to shave. Um, Hasidim, they don't shave at all. They would never shave. Um, but the main thing is the Cyburns have to be up till here up to the bone that's where it has to be cut you're not allowed to go further up um for me specifically yes i'm sure you guys have never seen this but here i have small sideburns on the side as well uh 
that's just me. Um, some people do, some people don't. Um, that's just me, just simple, uh, just a little stricter. That's how you want to call it. Uh, the Hasidim, you would see that they have the curls coming down. Again, more uh, more stricter, and the curl concept is fashion, if you want to call it. <laughs> that's what they. That's how they look at it. Uh, I think Krillin's preparing for his Halloween costume. Uh, David's been lighting the Sabbath candles. No phones, no work after sundown. One hundred percent. Lighting the Sabbath candles. We so the women usually light the sh the Sabbath candles um, Friday night, right by sundown. Oh, Wendy, you're Jewish. Nice. I didn't know that. Uh, most of the day in synagogue on Saturdays. Yes, we usually spend most of the day in synagogue on Saturdays. <laughs> Uh, now, where, where does Wendy live? I don't know. Wendy, where do you live? If you're still here. I'm still going down slowly, so I'm still not 100%. Uh, does no electronics, car, etc. also include no AC heaters in the home since technically you have electronics involved in the function? Yes, I'm an engineering nerd. Um, good question. Timers. Simple answer. Yeah, because you're not operating. The whole thing, I, I, I was under the assumption that you just, you, you're not supposed to operate the stuff correct if it's so set to it's timer before reason. the sabbath it's set to timer before the sabbath mm -hmm. so you a lot of cars specifically obviously there's no timer in a car um most electronics i can't so if you want to be very very technical and say the like the non-religious or the semi-religious or wherever they're holding they would keep the tv on or they would put the tv on a certain channel so they could watch it on the sabbath and so on <laughs> That's not allowed because of concept of what the Sabbath is. The Sabbath is meant yeah. for rest, not to meant to sit there and watch TV and not spend time with your family. So yeah. that's why that's not allowed. But you can't stop people from doing things. You know, it's funny because yeah, I made the mistake. We all get into this mistake. You're like, oh, no politics, no this, no that. But you always make the mistake and we do it anyway. So there was the guy who I used to work with who uh, I told you he was Muslim. and But he, he wouldn't. His wife, that's a whole other story. She would uh, observe the Ramadan, but he that's wouldn't. He couldn't. That, that, that but, Ramadan is a different religion, man. No, but I'm just, I'm just talking about as far as ritualistic, you know. And then with him, because he would always blame his, oh, I have diabetes. I can't, uh, you know, when I need sugar, I. But we like, we didn't like. You have to explain it to us, you know. We don't give a shit. Do whatever you got to do, man. We're working in the restaurant. You know, we're not going to, we're not judging you, but he always had to make it seem like, well, I have to, because technically if you, he would come up with this whole thing, if I'm sick, then you're allowed to, I says, okay, whatever, make the story short. There was another guy who used to deliver the bread and anybody who works in the business, bread delivery, they, they deliver the bread at nighttime. Right. So, so I, but the whole concept, I would say, well, you don't really observe Ramadan. Because I and I asked the guy, I says, I, you know, just as somebody like I'm asking you, like I says, do you fast at night instead of fasting during the day? Like if you have a job where you work at night and not during the day, I says, he's like, oh, no, 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 I can I can eat at nighttime. I says, but but I, because the guy, Mike Mohammed, the guy, he always he told me that the whole idea is that you're not supposed to eat because it's like you have to feel for the people who don't have food. Wow. Cool. OK, so. so I told him, look, I didn't know much, but my whole point is I was, the other guy who was the bread delivery guy, I says, but you're not really observing anything. It's like the guy who would leave the TV on and watch TV, but, oh, I didn't put the TV. I put it on yesterday. But technically, you're just kind of like, you know, because he's saying, well, I, I, I observe it, but but I said, but you're sleeping in the daytime, so you're really not observing it. <laughs> you're in, in bed, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Difference, kosher symbols. Yeah, so I'm going to touch upon this. Um, yeah, mixing meat and dairy, not allowed. So cheeseburgers, not happening. Um, that's why you would see the word parv on stuff. Yes, parv means that it wasn't used, no milk, no meat in the process. So that's parv. So you're allowed to eat it with milk or with meat. You make that decision. 
Um, but yeah, no meat and milk. Very, 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 very important thing that I didn't touch up on. And yes, those shoals are called taletot. That's how it's pronounced. Talesim, which is plural for or talit. It, it, it's, it's just plural and non-plural. It's a Hebrew word. Did uh, she say where she's from, Wendy? I think it was New York. Oh, so she's from... Where are you in New York? So yeah, I'm assuming... Where am I in New York? I am in Staten Island. Krillin's in Long Island. But I work in Washington Heights, so I travel literally everywhere. <laughs> and have, my family is from Brooklyn, so... I'm at 191 subs. I did not know that. Cool. <laughs> uh, blessing. Am I up to date? I'm not even up to date yet. I'm still trying to make everything. Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. Yes. Filler on the roof. Named it. Uh, no kissing. Now when you, go to, when okay. you go to every estate sale in the five towns, every single one has a copy of Fiddler on the Roof in vinyl, you know, the the, rec, uh, the soundtrack. Every house. It's like, it's like almost, it's more, it's like more common than the mezuzah. Really? Every house. Uh, Fiddler on the Roof soundtrack. Touch upon a mezuzah. What's a mezuzah? Okay, a mezuzah is, oh, well, yeah, I'll take you to a mezuzah. And yeah, I guess we'll get into the no kissing stuff. Yes, nothing premarital, basically. Uh, touching wise because you want to uh, keep it holy and you want to keep it for your wife. And the first time you do that, touch somebody or have relations is with your wife and you want to keep that. Every doorpost, Jews have this thing. It's called a mezuzah. It's basically has, as you see, something in there. And uh, it Basically, writings of stuff from the Old Testament, biblical writings. In it's, it's actually written specifically um, by somebody who's called a sofer, and a sofer is somebody who writes specifically on a parchment paper with a quill, and they are trained, highly trained, to write it exactly correctly. And get it in there. Can Jews get divorced? Unfortunately, uh, I'm going to say unfortunately, but unfortunately, it's something that does happen. And uh, yes, they can. Uh, that's something that's they 100% can. There's nothing to it. Krillin, I didn't know you're a sex expert. I don't know what that means, but no. Uh, is calling a yamaka beanie bad as kids? That's what we called it. Um. I guess I'd prefer yarmulke. A beanie sounds, I don't know. But, I mean, I don't take it derogatory or anything. I just take it, just, you don't know what it is. But it's, now why in Israel they call it the kippah? No? The Hebrew word. Yiddish word is yarmulke. Kippah is Hebrew. Okay. Because I watched those interviews. There's a couple of guys, the YouTubers, like this one guy, Corey something. Corey, what the hell? He goes to like the West Bank and he interviews people. You ever see yes, that? Yes, yes, yes. I saw that guy. I saw yeah. that guy. That's I'm politics. Gonna say, I want what? That's politics. No, but he's got, but he's very, he, but he, 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 I love the way he posts his questions and he, and he's very, he gets all very random. He's very good at getting all different types of people with the, you know what I mean? Right here, I guys, yeah, check that guy out if you want to. If you want to get into Israeli politics and stuff that Culture. we can, that I should not touch upon, and I won't touch upon over here because this is not place, time, or stuff to do it. And I probably don't want anybody else touching upon it because it's very yeah. complex and pol political that will stay away from it. Uh, we could not use the same utensils to cook mirror meat either. A hundred percent, Randy. Yes, we cannot. Hence, but now did you change? I heard that on Yom Kippur, you're supposed to. Ch that's when you're supposed to change, put all new utensils. I didn't know people do that. But that's very cool if they do. I would. I, 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 I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised. The idea behind Yom Kippur is that it's it's a day of it's a day of atonement. It's a day that we basically fast 25 hours, and we're in synagogue literally all day, and 
you're there to pray to God that we should have a good year and we should be written in the book of life. Simple as that. Um, that's, that's the idea behind the thing. If the curls are fashion, why do they call it style hair curl and sporting? Uh, it's cheesy. Did I? Did I? I think I. No, I didn't skip. I think I'm catching up, people. So you can have Alexa turn on your TV on and off, but if it's on a timer, <laughs> it gets too complex with that. I actually stopped saying, okay, Google, cancel uh, in the house because it would literally get it off. But like you said, just like any, anybody, anything else, people who are Catholic, they have Lent. Say, look, I'm Jewish, married to a Catholic. That, like in New York, that's very, very common. It's very common. It's very common. So, so, but I'm saying like this, it's the same thing. People who are Catholic, they have something called Lent. And they they do the same. Th you're supposed to give things up, but they do tricks around it. The same kind of like, oh, I'll leave the TV on. You know, I mean, look, you said, you, who are you fooling? You're fooling yourself, you know? When I grew up in Brooklyn. Oh, wait. Now I live 20... East of Tampa, Florida. Are you Orthodox or Sephardic? Oh, okay. So, believe it or not, I'm Sephardic Orthodox. Orthodox doesn't define um, whether you're Sephardic, whether you're from the Middle or you're from the Middle East or Poland or so on and so forth. It defines how strict or how you keep... The religion, basically. Uh, there are three levels. Conservative, reform, and orthodox. Levels, I wouldn't really call them levels. I would call them ideas of how you keep it. Um, reform, I, I know nothing about. Um, <laughs> uh, conservative, basically, uses orthodoxy, but they water it down a lot. Um, to an extent that they have to call themselves conservative. Um, and then orthodox is basically you're keeping the Sabbath. And this is, you're either, you could also be non-religious orthodox. If you're non-religious orthodox, then you know you're doing wrong and you're orthodox. You're just not religious. Um, orthodoxy is basically keeping the Sabbath, keeping kosher, and uh, keeping the holidays and according to the orthodox way, which is keeping the Sabbath, not driving, not uh, kosher, not eating non-kosher. More stricter, if you want to put it, more stricter form of way. Fasting is an important topic, Rob. It may run, okay, fine. Krillin's fasting, fire, so fire. So no chicken, par, iguana, lol. Well, I don't think we eat iguana. Um, it, how do you, what, what do you write? Parv? Parmigiana. You can't that's eat, you can't eat chicken. Everything. You can't, no. nothing with melted cheese. No, no, no cheeseburger. No, 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 no steaks, steak, Philly cheese steak. So when did my family come to America? Believe it or not, my father was born in Egypt. Um, and in 19... I don't know. He was born in like the fifties. So he ended up having to escape with my grandparents from the six day war in Egypt. <clears throat> they believe it or not in Egypt at the time, the war was still going on past the six days in Egypt. They were still torturing the Jews and telling them that we're winning. Egypt's winning. Egypt's winning. Egypt's winning. And, um, it kept going on for months until they actually came out and said we lost uh, the war. Um, but my father was stuck there. Um, he escaped with my grandparents and his brother to France. And from France, they came to Brooklyn, New York. Um, years, we're talking about 1960s. 1960s. My mother... After 67, that was with the war. Yeah, after 67. So probably 70s, probably 70s. My mother was born and raised in Israel and came here when she got married. She met my father here at a... At a... Bris. Brooklyn. Yeah, in Brooklyn at a party. And um, that was that. Emily, welcome. I hope you're enjoying this conversation. Now let's go down. Oh, man. Oh, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. 
Well, but but let me ask you a question. No, but still, but you did. You said you didn't go. What, now, talk about your time in Israel. Talk about my time in Israel. Because you said you didn't. Because I told you I went with um, the girl I worked with. She went the last year. She went with that organization, and she went the last year that she could. She went at like twenty eight years old. That's the oldest you can go. They don't. You could go to Israel whenever you want. No, no, you're not listening to him saying. With that organization. Oh, birthright. Oldest... I didn't go with birthright. I ended up going by myself. I went to a yeshiva, which was strictly on biblical studies. And that's what I did for three years post high school. You know, um, because she went, she had to spend days. She went like, I think, camping too with the uh, Bedouin people and the, uh, you know, outside and everything like that. And then, uh, so you don't know what they do? The birthright people? I know what they do. They have, but the birthright has birthrights for a week or two. Birthright, birthright is not, uh, yeah. not more than that. It's basically for a week or two. My sister actually was doing mentoring and whatnot with it. Um, they basically take you through the old city, through the city to see exactly your birthright. Uh, you're, you're a Jew. You have a birthright to to Israel. They want you to see what, what, what it's like there, what, what, how people live over there. Um, obviously, it's probably it's not going on now because of the pandemic and everything. And tourism is totally shut down over there. Um, but... Basically, what they have is they they take you through the kibbutz. They take you through Israel. Israel, right? The culture in Israel right now is very, it's very tour tourism. It's, it's very geared towards tourism. So I mean, even even within even within the cat even within the Christian faith, yeah. it yeah, I mean it also holds a, a big importance over there. So they have like you wouldn't call it birthright. You'd, there there are other organizations that have certain tourist attractions geared towards it but it, it it's there's there's a lot there i mean israel is a very holy and spiritual place if you guys ever check it out or have a chance after this whole situation is going on but it's very very cool place to go check out can you open the fridge on a weekend oh wow you really want to get technical <laughs> That's very, very, very technical, Tracy. We could open the fridge. Um, Dan, probably, because he's an engineer gear, can answer this a little bit better. But um, you, can, you should open the fridge only when the motor is already running. So you won't overdo the motor. And you should open it as you need it and close it. Um, you shouldn't open it when it's the motor is not running because if the motor is not running, then it's going to be turning on the motor. Again, this is very, very technical. I'm talking about the, every aspect of my life has to be thought when it comes to Shabbos, when it comes to when it when it comes to holidays and how we keep it and so on. So now you have to. My friend, a guy, he was old. He's he's older guy. He's you know old. You know our parents' age, older. And years ago, he's from Brooklyn. And he was the Shabbos Goy. Oh, so here explaining Krillin's famous Shabbos Goy basically <laughs> is a non-Jewish person, um, like Krillin, uh, who lives in the Jewish area and is available to the Jewish people to uh, on the Sabbath or the holidays to come and turn on the oven for them if their oven goes off if they need a if they need it. Or if a light is on in their bedroom, like their kids jumping around all over the place and says, oh, daddy, I'm turning on the light. You know, it's Shabbos, you're not supposed to. Yeah, but I turned on the light anyway. So now you need that light closed because the kids need to go to sleep. So you have a Shabbos guy. Uh, guy basically means non-Jew. Um, that's all it really means. And uh, for yeah. the building, there's usually one like he was for the building. Where? He, in, in New York? Brooklyn. Oh my gosh, that's really that's really that's really like Orthodox Central Brooklyn. I mean, you have to talk yeah. about Williamsburg and w probably Williamsburg or Bar Park. No other. Yeah. yeah, but this, but I don't, it, I don't, but this is going back to like the 1960s. You know, I don't oh, know. Yeah. This guy's yeah, this guy's old. Yeah, he's an older guy, Frankie Pasqualino. Wow. And 
so he used to talk about that like he said lighting the stove and you know and how he you know, and it's funny because when he moved out here he moved out to that area which was you know uh, you know like the re well actually no the oceanside they have uh golf they have uh you know they have um they have some orthodox not much it's not obviously oceanside it's not like the five towns five towns nowadays is very orthodox right i mean you would say so right? that, very you know. orthodox, yes and it's big it's it's vast now you know it it stretches like the guy i told you at the bagel store you know he was he was saying uh you know like places like inwood you know it's it's because of the other places are so expensive people are starting to move out to there because it's obviously much cheaper than if you live in Lawrence, you know? Right. All right. Just to end up, we have two more things. And I also want to touch on part upon one topic. When you open the fridge, it turns on the light though. Not necessary. Pull out the light bulb or tape the switch down or have a fridge that doesn't have a light or a lot of events fridges actually have. GE makes Shabbos settings, believe it or not. If you look into it, GE makes Shabbos settings specifically for Jews. And there's also Shabbos settings on the ovens. Check that out. Just believe it or not. They met with rabbis and worked it out. There's Shabbos. The elevators too. Yes. Shabbos elevators basically means that it stops at every floor. No pressing buttons or anything. Yes, there is. Okay. So here, let's have a call, talk about this. We'll end it over here. Josh, you could flush the toilet, no problem. There's no electricity, as I know it goes through it. <laughs> um, everything said and done. Um, let me just hide this. Everything said and done. If there is an emergency or there is something out of the ordinary happening, I'm sure Krilla knows that there's something called Hatsala which is a Jewish ambulance service that services everybody, whether you're Jewish or not Jewish, okay? Um, but that being said, if there's an emergency, it's like a regular weekday. There is no, there. You emergency is an emergency. It's not, life comes first, period, in Judaism. Your life is at stake at any moment for any reason. Life is most important and it pushes off everything if a person's about to die because he's fasting on yom kippur you feed him food fast uh you know there a person has an impelled object through their chest i'm guys i'm talking like this because i'm a nurse but stuff like this happened a heart attack on on the sabbath you call 911 or you call hatsala to get to the you to, to get to the hospital right away and they're around they're around yeah. There's, there's life is the most important. And when it comes to that, no questions asked, just do what you need to do to get everything done. Now, are they, now the people, they're not all volunteer. Are they, cause I know they take donations. They have the boxes where people donate, but that's not, it's not a, like a fire department. Like, you know how, like, like it's New York city has a paid fire department, right? But in Long Island, it's a, a volunteer fire department. You know right. that, right? Yeah. So, but is that a, is that that's a, is that a paid or or the 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 Hatsala is it Hatsala is one hundred percent volunteered. Um, it's basically a whole bunch of people that walk around with radios and they have a central dispatch, tri-state area that dispatches them to wherever they oh, need them. So it's oh, it's yeah, not just it's full. Uh, I, I just thought it meant yep. oh, it, it's the name of the organization. That doesn't mean just ambulance. Yeah. Oh, okay. Correct. I didn't know if it was. Hatsala, means, Hatsala, the literal meaning, it's a Hebrew word. Hatsala means to save. Okay. Um, believe it or not, in Israel, they have something called United Hatsala, where there are Arabs, there are women, there are men, who are all involved in saving lives. That's what it's about. Yeah, uh, like I said, question, you always right? see the, the little box, like at the bagel store, that have the box for people to donate. You right. Know. Yeah, because it's all volunteer. Yeah. Do you have someone cook on the weekends? We pre-cook. So, for example, um, for a holiday, it's different. But for the Sabbath specifically, what you can have is 
we have literally a crock pot with a stew going for uh, for for the morning. Friday night, it's basically you've already cooked for Friday night, so you have the rice and fish and whatever else you want to eat, so on. Um, you have a stew in the morning, and you have like you stuff that you could warm up. You have like a hot hot uh, hot plate that you could put stuff on to warm up, and you warm up food that you was pre made. And, and if you make a lot of money reselling, you can have the Shabbos Goy make you something. Yes, and, and if you, you make know. a lot of you need a lot of money reselling, especially for New York. To get yeah. a shot to hire Shabbos Goy in New York, you a lot of money. Yeah. Making money, you gotta have a nice meal, nice spread. You know, All right, guys. I think we're calling it a night. Krillin, I really, really, really appreciate you. Anytime, I really man. I'm around. It was, it was really awesome. Guys, if you have any other questions, hit me up on IG. Let me know if you want uh, if you want me to do this again. Um, again, all questions are on the table. You can ask anything. If I don't have an answer to, I'll try to figure it out myself. But, um, guys, thank you for coming. Really enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed it and it was very informative to you and you know what I go through now. Uh, and uh, see you on the next one. Have a good oh, night, yeah, guys. You oh, you click it off. I was going to say, the, yeah, the, 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 the one last thing I was going to say is... Go for it. And and yes, people will say, I, you say, I can't go to garage sales on Saturday. <laughs> yes, I cannot go to a garage sales. <laughs> no, no, I can direct them to watch this. I cannot go to garage sales on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, that's the main thing that we said. <laughs> All right. Have a good night, guys. Have a great one.